Hello, in this video, I will talk about structure and function of endoplasmic reticulum. Now, endoplasmic reticulum is just like a production house of a cell. So it's just like a factory. So inside this factory, several products are manufactured, properly monitored for its quality, and stringently, they are tagged properly to be delivered to specific locations. Now, if we talk about ER, there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum a rough endoplasmic reticulum and a smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Let's just talk about the rough endoplasmic reticulum first and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum then. So in, in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, it has ribosomes attached by riboforin. Thereby, it is named as rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, in rough endoplasmic reticulum, one of the most important job which is done is N-linked glycosylation tag attachment to a newly formed polypeptide. So as if a new product in the factory is produced and a tag is attached which is a quality control tag or which is an information tag that would be further used by the quality control ma machinery and can be also used to be properly delivering it to its desired location. So that's why putting this N-linked glycosylation tag is very very important and we would see the mechanism by which this tag is read by other quality control machineries inside the ER. So here is the ER lumen and outside region is the cytosol. So on the ER lumen there is something known as dolicol phosphate. Now dolicol is a polyisoprenoid. On the dolicol there are several enzymes which transfers N-acetylglucosamine and for, and elongates the chain and there is a further round of elongation of this chain by UDP N acetyl glucosamine and this forms an intermediate chain of this tag. After that several residues of mannose is attached to this growing chain. After the chain has grown to a length of 8 to 9 residues of this saccharide molecules then it is flipped inside the ER lumen because the further processing enzymes are found only inside the ER lumen, not in the cytosol. Once inside the ER lumen, the mannose residues are also added. And after that, there are glucosyl transferase enzyme which transfers glucose on these tags and complete the formation of these tags. So one this, once this n acetyl uh, one this once this n-linked oligosaccharide tag is ready, it is transferred to a nascent polypeptide and it attaches to a aspergine residue by the action of the enzyme oligosaccharide transferase. Now we know that on the ear surface, on the ear surface, especially on the rough ear, there are ribosomes, and the ribosomes are sitting on the ear surface and attached to it by riboforins. Now rough ER are producing rough ER surface has ribosomes which are producing nascent polypeptides. Once the nascent polypeptides are produced, they bind to a signal recognition particle which transfer it to its receptor, the SRP receptor. Now once bound to this SRP receptor, it is then further translocated to a translocation channel. Through the translocation channel, the newly formed polypeptide can enter the ER lumen. And inside the ER lumen, there are protein folding machineries known as chaperones. There are calnexin, calreticulin, and BIP, which is a HSP70 family chaperone. All these proteins has different all these chaperone proteins has different roles in protein folding. Calnexin folds the proteins into a proper conformation and also help in refolding of a misfolded protein. Whereas BIP hold the protein in an unfolded conformation, waiting for the proper time to arrive when the protein should be properly folded. Now, calnexin and calverticulin are basically calcium binding lectins. Lectin means they would bind to glucose moieties or they would recognize glucose moieties. So on the nascent polypeptide, there is the N-linked glycosylation tag and on the top of that tag, there is glucose residues, which is recognized by the calnexin and calverticulin. It holds the nascent polypeptide 
and helps it to be folded properly. And after that, a glucosidase molecule, which is an important enzyme which removes glucose, removes the last trace of glucose from the newly synthesized polypeptide. And thereby, the newly synthesized polypeptide is ready to be detaching from the calvernexin chaperone and to be delivered to a Golgi. Now, let's say the protein during folding gets misfolded. Now, what happens is there are specific mechanisms by which this misfolded protein could be refolded. One such important enzyme is glucosyl transferase, which transfers a glucose residue onto the top of these tag. And glucose tag attachment leads to the rebinding of that misfolded protein with the calnexin chaperone. Now, calnexin chaperone can again fold it properly and try to re-deliver it. Thereby, inside the ER, there are stringent quality control mechanisms which is monitor over the product quality and how the product is delivered to the other places. Now, inside the ER, there are protein disulfide isomerase which helps in formation of disulfide bonds in the proteins. Not only formation of disulfide bonds, protein disulfide isomerase also can rearrange existing disulfide bonds. And since disulfide bond rearrangement could lead to slight change in protein conformation, so it can also change various aspects of protein folding and thereby protein conformation. Now, we have talked about the functions of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, let's just take a look at the functions of smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum doesn't have these attached ribosomes and thereby the name is smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now, smooth endo endoplasmic reticulum or ACR is very important for production of membrane phospholipids. Inside the ACR, glycerol 3-phosphate via several steps is getting converted into phosphatidic acid which then further converted to diacylglycerol and from diacylglycerol, it could attach to choline, ethanolamine, or serine to form phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylserine, or phosphatidylethylamine, which are all important membrane phospholipids. And that is then delivered to the membranes. Now, ACR also might help in detoxification. It has been seen in the liver hepatocytes, there are specific molecules known as cytochrome P450. Now, cytochrome P450 can carry out various reactions and thereby it could help in detoxification of drugs and xenobiotics. And that kind of concludes my video on functions of smooth endoplasmic reticulum and rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, if you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and please comment. Thank you.